Okay, we're just gonna hop on Snorlax here. We're gonna get in on onto the water, and we're gonna head south. And we immediately run into a Pokemon, and it's gonna be Tentacle. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Pokemon. As we adventure our way around the Kanto region, we have gathered quite a bit of experience under our belt. We have five badges knocking on the door of a sixth, and we just surfed to the south of Pallet Town, and we're gonna see what's hiding in this patch of grass, and it is unholy. This is Dangela, and um, we'll try to catch it. <laughs> no guarantees, though. The body slam did a good bit more damage than I thought it was going to do, however. All right, it's in the red, and it's paralyzed. Wow. Let's we'll see about throwing a Pokeball at it. Aww. Great ball would be just great. And he broke out immediately of a great ball, huh? You. You. Come on, guy. Wow. I uh, did not foresee Tangela putting up such a fight. Huh. Maybe we needed Ultra Balls. Yeesh. Stay. Okay. That was an ordeal. The whole body is swathed with wide vines that are similar to seaweed. Its vines shake as it shakes as it walks. Thanks, Tangela. Back on to the big guy and out into the ocean. We're going to see a lot of tentacle. So we're um we ask that you please bear with us. He's only level 5 too. Mm. I guess we need one for the decks. I got a big hole. Wanna go for it? It'd be nice if we could catch a tentacle. <sighs> Without having to just lob balls at it. Holy crap. Does, does this guy have 6 Magikarp? Is that what we've stumbled upon? Um, according to the internet, which I didn't know this, but apparently every Pokemon game has one fisherman somewhere, or at least one guy somewhere, who will have six Magikarp for some reason. Don't ask me why. I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. And there's nothing to do here, but to just keep taking them out. I mean, Magikarp evolves into Gyarados at level 20, so why in the world you wouldn't evolve at level 20 is beyond me. I, you know, I, um, I love Magikarp. I really love Magikarp. I get it. He's cool because he's not cool. That That's kind of like the 90s mentality of, uh, that I have growing up in the 90s, and, uh, Gyarados, though, if you have that, you I mean you want to have that many Magikarp and look like a goofball? Go for it. But you need at least one Gyarados for the ass kicking. 
the ass kickery. Nope. Magic cart number five, folks. And he used Splash. No effect. Parasect used Mega Drain. It's super effective! Sucked help from enemy Magikarp. Enemy Magikarp fainted. Parasect gained. Yep, there's the other Magikarp. Fisherman sent out Magikarp. Magikarp used Tackle. Ooh, look at you knowing an attack for a change. All your brothers and sisters just had Splash. Or at least that's the only move they used. Look at you coming out of the gate all strong with tackle. <laughs> you, it didn't matter, but good on you. You want to know if the fish are biting? My yes, Chubster. I'd love to know if the fish are biting. This guy over here has six magic art. What do you have? Guess he shut me up. <laughs> Seeking looks so weird here. I mean, they improved upon him a good deal because. Whew! He looks so unfortunate here. He's got those little kissy lips. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking. Do you mind? See, he actually managed to take. Uh, not take, do a good bit of damage to Parasect, because he has Peck, which is flying type move. Ooh, Goldeen. The lovely temptress of the sea. The way the tail flows so elegantly would make you think she's dancing like the bell of the ball. Uh-oh. We're out of Mega Drain or whatever the hell I had. Yes! Right you! Parasect enough, come back! Go right you! Right you! Thunderbolt! I always love doing that. I love playing like I'm in the show. It's stupid, but sometimes fun. Nah, we're just gonna leave right you out there. He's got this. Ouch. Alright. Taught that guy a lesson. I hate to use up one of my max ethers. But we need our ability to suck the life out of Pokemon back. Use the super push. Alright, we're good. We good! <sighs> I'm still yawning every two seconds like I do in every episode I've ever made, but we good. There we go. Oh, come on. Alright, you. Level 15. Well, it's kind of better. I bet if we used cut, he'd survive. And I'd lose that bet. <laughs> Whoops. Look at the little guy swim over. What's wrong with me swimming? Nothing. You go right ahead and swim to your heart's content, little man. Now wait, just to cut. Mm, I almost said cotton pick a minute. Oh, that's going to be hard to lose. It's such a... That phrase, I heard it in the South growing up all the time. Old people said it a lot. And like I said in another episode, and my friend hadn't have called me out on it, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. It's just one of those phrases that you never think about. I never stopped to think about any of the colloquialisms in the South. It's just a part of life here. Horrible racist, painful part of the cell. Alright, body slam. You know what? We'll use cut. We'll use up some of these cuts. Well. Yeah, there we go. Cut. 
cut. Aw, oh, how come he gets to go first? What makes him so special. I don't know that I've ever had squid or octopus. That's something I need to try. We do not... I don't even know what the closest Japanese restaurant would be to me. We had a, a really good Chinese restaurant here. And I think last year they sold it. It went from like one Chinese family to another Chinese family. Now it's closed. And um, that makes me sad. No, Parasect! Because now if I want Asian food, I'll have to leave town. Yeah! Raichu's got my back. Tentacruel! If I weren't using Thunderbolt, you might actually be built fun to fight, but you're going down. With one hit, Jack. Look at him with all that. He's got his arms folded. Look at the sass. I honestly miss... Miss little things like that. Alright, let's see. Who will be going out first now that Parasect is down and out? Who needs to go out? Snorlax, your second lowest. The sea cleanses my body. Ooh, look at that. See, that's that character design invokes the feeling of speed. I feel like that Seedra is about to swim really fast through the water and blast me with ink. The modern 3D models of the Pokemon... Eh, they just kind of stand there and kind of hurl themselves in the general direction of the other Pokemon. Um, at least back in this era, you had your imagination, which like with literature, when you're reading, it's all up to the imagination. You only have the hint of a portrait that's painted by the author. Now, Pokemon here is a lot of the same way in the fact that you can leave the animations on, like, we'll just use Surf here um, as an example. Surf has a pretty lengthy um, animation here. Water droplets over the screen, then two little columns of water shoot out. Now, modern interpretations of Surf is just water covering the entire screen. Um, so yeah, there was a lot left to the imagination back in the day thanks to the limits of technology and I think that's one of the things that made Pokemon Stadium um, such a hit for people um, I know I loved it back in the day you could insert your Game Boy cartridge into an, uh, a peripheral that attached to the back of the N64 controller and you could upload your Pokemon to Stadium 1 or Stadium 2 and play your Pokemon in 3D and it was great they had fun mini games. Um, the announcer was one of the better parts. I loved the announcer guy. Um, bro. Ooh. Level 10. You know what? Anytime I attack these jokers, they just go down so easy. So let's try this. No. Nah. Uh. But yeah, the modern Pokemon games, if a Pokemon goes to use buying. He'll kind of like move forward and then bite into thin air. Then this weird animation will occur on your Pokemon. And no, that's not what I had envisioned back in the day. It's not what the anime led us to believe was happening. If a Pokemon uses bite, it physically goes over and bites its opponent. Physically. So, I don't know if they did that to try to avoid the Kyle's mom groups and all the activists who have sand trapped in their vaginas and they can't get it out. And it's just pissing them off, so they have to be mad at other things. Or, if they genu genuinely were too lazy to program it. Because, let's face it, at this point, programming 700 and some odd Pokemon into the game... These games, I don't know enough about programming, but I'm sure that they're time-consuming to program. And people keep demanding them one right after the other, after the other, after the other. 
I have to imagine that it's pretty stressful to be on the team. Tentacool drifts in shallow seas. Anglers who hook them by accident are often punished by its stinging acid. No, no nickname. But yeah, I imagine that it's stressful trying to get these games out, especially when they're as insanely popular as Pokemon is. But I still think that I, I would be willing to wait a little longer. Hell, give me a five year gap if it means that the Pokemon will actually go out and attack and I don't have to watch some stupid animation where they don't connect. Ugh. Shoulder. Shoulder is an interesting design. I often wonder if the tongue was always intended to be part of Shoulder's design or not. I've been recording on days for a good many weeks now. I can't remember how many weeks exactly. I've lost track. Everything's one big foggy haze these days, but um, I'm recording at night which is something I haven't done in a while and all I can hear are dogs and I don't know why they're going crazy and I don't really want to stop the recording and go outside and see what it is I'll pop out head out the door when I'm done and see what the hell's happening out there but it's annoying it's really annoying and things have gotten so noisy here in my neighborhood it's summer you have your lawnmowers, you have barking dogs, you have kids running and screaming because of no school. And the sun's going down at 8.45, almost 9 o'clock at night. And the kids are staying out super late. And, um, and you have cars going up and down the street, booming and tub thumping. We have this one car, and we live on a dead end street. And now there's a car that goes down the street. It'll go back and forth during the day playing really loud music you know how some people do and um, that could interfere with recordings which is why I need to get back on nights and get back to recording at night but I'm having I'm having a real problem with my sleep schedule it's really screwing me up bad the Metroid episodes are suffering all of my playthroughs are currently suffering. I haven't done a mukbang in a while, either. Mm. And I had a cold a few weeks ago, and it's... It's not wanting to go away. Tor Snorlax is just tearing ass through all of these fish. Which is fine. That's exactly what we need him to do. Isn't that right, Snorlax? Alright. We're gonna switch out Snorlax now. Let's see. Hmm. Get some Gengar action in there. Back in Gen 1, you had to manually choose to use HMs. I caught all my Pokemon at sea. Yeah, you couldn't face the water and then press A and it asked you if you wanted to surf, or face a bush and press A and it'll ask you if you want to use cut. Nah, that didn't, that didn't exist back in the day. Go, Gengar! You psychic! Ooh, water gun. I'm rural scurred. Oh, that that did nothing. He's higher level. I don't know why I thought Psychic would do something against a Psychic type. I'm retarded. Uh, and before anybody comes at me, you can't use that anymore. Fuck off. I'm from the 90s. Saying something's gay or saying something's retarded is super ingrained into my vocabulary. And it's taken me nearly 20 years. To, to, to get that shit out of my vocab and every now and then it pops back out it doesn't mean I have anything against anybody it's just you grew up saying it it's like I said earlier with the cotton picking minute thing it 
You grow up with it. It's it's tattooed on your brain. You have to learn how to get rid of it. And it's not easy. There's no hate behind it. There's it's just it's just a thing. It's just part of your lexicon. Diver down. Yeah, you'll be all right. But speaking of down, I really am so tired. I want to go lay down. Right now, I'm in a tri triathlon meet. Really? Nobody else has mentioned anything about a meet? I think you might be in one in your head. Because you're the first person I've heard say anything about this triathlon. Gengar looks so weird. A little chunk monster. Ah, War Turtle! Yes. We'll show you what a real turtle can be. Blasters, use bite! Yeah, get him! Bite him, bite the turtle. That's cute. He used bite on me. Bye bye. Jabroni. Pant pant. <laughs> well, we fought that guy while he was in the middle of a thing. Ooh. Bingo bango. Ah, feel the sun and the wind. Made him a surfer for no reason. <laughs> like, it's uh, totally bogus that we can't just, like, live out in the ocean, man. Polly Whirl and I would live out here. Totally, if we could. But, like, sometimes Polly Whirl gets tired and, like, I have to go back to the land, you know? Because I get, I get hungry and... And then I, I haven't heard from my girlfriend because it's the 90s and we don't have cell phones yet. So. And the tentacle always loses every single time I use him in a battle. He's like so totally worthless, dude. But I keep using him anyway. Of course, caught this cool Pokemon the other day. They haven't had a chance to use him in battle, brah. Whoa, you like totally took me out. Not cool, dude. Alright, that's, that's my rendition of... <laughs> Yo! Or, yeah, I lost. A little bit of auto in there from the Simpsons. <gasps> we made it. We spent the entire episode out on the ocean. The door is locked. Wow. Well, that's not good. All right, let's heal up our team. And uh, I think that's going to do it for me for today. Don't know why I went kind of Mario on you there at the end of the whole thing. But I will see you guys back here again tomorrow. See you folks. <laughs>